Made Summit talk hosted by Zenman. I really appreciate you guys signing up for this talk. And as a gift, I want to share something really special with you. So this talk is about something that we've all been thinking about probably a lot the past few years, and that's how to hire and train your own virtual assistant for your cleaning company. Now, a lot of you may already know me that I run a fairly large cleaning business in the US, but I also run the first virtual assistant agency for cleaning business owners. And we basically handle the office admin for you, whether that's phones, customers, teams, we have someone who's US based and trained and we come and handle that for you in your business. The problem is a great VA can be pretty expensive. You might spend over a thousand dollars a month on someone coming into your business and handling these tasks for you. And many of us just can't afford that. We're either too small or it's too early for us to bring someone on at that price. And that's absolutely okay. But I don't want you to just fall in the cracks and feel like you can't take advantage of this amazing thing as well. Because I started the same place as well in my own cleaning company. There was no VA company for me to turn to who could do this stuff for me. So today in the talk, I'm going to show you uh, a crash course on how you can hire and train your own VA to work in your cleaning company. If you stick around to the end of this talk, I do actually have a course coming out specifically on this that you'll get 50% off of. It's a very, very in-depth course that walks you step by step through hiring your own VA, including job templates, including descriptions, including how to work together, weekly meetings, and so on. So it's a very extensive course that takes you step by step through actually bringing on your own VA and your cleaning company. So this is by no means an exhaustive talk, but this is kind of the 101 do-it-yourself talk. And if you do everything in this talk, you'll be able to successfully bring on a VA, someone you should be able to trust and who should be able to work with you. Uh, but if you do want more guidance, more handholding, and you want a system that works, and you want to just take my templates, take, copy and paste everything, and you know my SOPs and everything, you can have that. Uh, that's just in the course for you that you'll get 50% off. So, so you can stick around to the end of that talk, but welcome to this talk. This is entitled, You Are Replaceable, because I want to take you through a mindset shift before anything else. And it's this, the goal of being a good business owner is to make yourself completely replaceable. And so you need to uh, transition from thinking, I'm the CEO, I'm so important, my business will fail without me. You have to transition from that to a place where it doesn't matter if you're there or not. It actually doesn't matter if you're there or not. And that's what I've been able to do in my own cleaning company. Uh, I spend, uh, this is true, um, I tell people that <laughs> I spend less than an hour a day uh, running my cleaning company because they don't believe me if I tell them the truth. And the truth is I spend less than 10 minutes a day. I have gone entire weeks where I haven't done anything at all in my cleaning company except just to say hi to my manager and check in that everything is okay. And it's because a clean company is a fairly unique type of business where we can automate and delegate almost everything in this business. But for some reason, most of us haven't actually done that yet. So I've actually talked to people who've been running their cleaning business since the early 1970s who are still working full eight hour days in their cleaning business. They're still answering the phone. They're still doing the scheduling almost 50 years later, which is crazy to think about to me. And so it kind of came to that down to the situation where they guardedly, almost angrily asked me, like, what do I know that they don't know? Um, I'm just going to tell you my story for a few minutes and then get right into it because I think it'll make a lot more sense if I do. So years ago in college, uh, I didn't want to start a tech company. This was, uh, we're still kind of in that phase in the entrepreneurship industry, but it was much hotter a few years ago to start, to want to start a software company or a web application and make a unicorn. But I wasn't really interested in all that. I didn't really care. So uh, I started to build a cleaning company instead and I called it Thinkmates. It's in the DC area. Um, and it was just a side project at first. I was in my final semester of college and I knew I didn't want to work for someone else, but I, I didn't really have a great business idea. So I, I just went with someone else's idea, which is as old as time, a cleaning business. And uh, I started building this cleaning business, but it started growing like, really quickly. Uh, we actually went from zero to $20,000 a month in less than 90 days. And I, I see that typo there. It says $20 a month. Uh, it's meant to say $20,000 a month. Um, I just forgot the K. So we grew really quickly uh, and I was just in this zone of uh, just super productive, super, super fast scaling growth. Um, but because I was growing so quick and I was a new business owner, um, this was kind of my downfall. And I, I didn't, 
I, I hadn't uh, encountered certain situations before, so I didn't know how to deal with them. And the one situation that really crushed me was Halloween of 2016, where uh, we were getting so many bookings coming in. It was just really crazy and I was ecstatic. I was on a sales high from just having so many people booking us that I just didn't think to ask my teams if they would want to work Halloween day or not, <laughs> which in hindsight is really stupid. I just assumed they would want the work. Well, Halloween, the night before Halloween, Halloween Eve, uh, half my teams called off and I had about a dozen bookings that no longer had someone coming to clean them. And I had to painfully search for hours to see if there was someone else who could come and do it, uh, a referral I could send them to, but everyone was booked or closed. There was literally no one in the city who, or even in Maryland and Virginia nearby who could do the cleaning of that year at that time. And so I had to painfully call a bunch of my customers and let them know that they were not getting their place cleaned. They could get it cleaned the day after, uh, but they were not getting it cleaned that day. And uh, I, I had a bit of a nervous breakdown because I had so many people shouting at me, so many people angry, and I was just sitting in my office, just completely burnt out emotionally. And uh, I knew that if I wanted to continue growing this business, which I did, I had to find a way to not do everything. But I, I was in this thing called the Clean Valley of Despair, where you're kind of between two and five hundred thousand dollars a year in revenue, where you need an office manager because you're so busy, but you just you can't afford one. Um, and so I was reading the Four Hour Work Week at the time by Tim Ferriss. It's a really popular book on you know becoming free from your business, and uh, he talked about virtual assistants for his product business, his supplement business. And even though no one had done it before, I figured maybe there's a way that I could take what he did and apply it to cleaning. And so I, I started searching around for VAs who used to work in an office, but didn't anymore. And who just wanted a couple hours of work a day. They didn't want eight hours of work a day. And uh, I finally found a wonderful one in New Jersey. Uh, and I, I'll get to this later, but I didn't approach it the best way at first, but I started handing off tasks to her. And uh, I had this just enormous revelation and stress relief from not having to handle the phones and the customers or the scheduling anymore. And it was this transformative moment for me as a business owner because it really showed me the difference between uh, running a business and owning a business. And the, the difference is just massive. So all my cleaning business friends, naturally, when they heard about this, they wanted me to train a VA for them too. And this is kind of how my second company, Innova Local, was born. Uh, we now serve dozens and dozens and dozens of cleaning companies all around the US, Canada, and even the UK and Australia now. So we're, we're really all around the world. Um, and since then, we've uh, we've really been doing this for everyone. It's, it's just uh, it's been beautiful to see all these transformations. But the the point I want to make here is uh, this is not about my VA company. I just want to share my background with you. Why I'm an expert in this. So I want to make a transition now to actually uh, talking about how to hire your own VA. And here's the thing. It's fine if you can't afford an agency VA but I wanna walk you through just a few pros and cons of independent first agency VAs, because there are some that are important to think about. Uh, but first, what can a VA actually do for you? So most people think of a VA as a research or a social media VA, but I think of them as a virtual office manager. So they're no different than a normal office manager, except they only work when you need them to, uh, and they're not next to you. So you don't have to make them coffee or, or anything, right? Um, so. They can handle your phones, they can do follow-up calls, they can manage your teams, they can reach out to your leads and close them, and they can schedule and handle your cards for you. So really everything the same as an office manager. So from this point on, I want you to think of a VA for cleaning companies as a virtual office manager. So if you're going the independent VA route, which is a, this what this talk is about, uh, I want you to be aware of a few pros and cons to each, but just so you know what you're getting into. So. With an independent VA, they are often cheaper than an agency, but you have uh, no quality control. So they're, uh, if you've never hired a VA before, which you probably haven't if you're watching this talk, um, you don't know what to look out for. And I'm going to share some things to look out for here, but I want you to be aware of this. You just, just you will make mistakes the first couple of VAs you hire. It's, it's okay. It happens. Don't get discouraged and think the VA thing is not for you if you make a bad hire. It's, it's like if you hire a bad cleaner. If it doesn't work out the first couple times, you're not going to stop and shut down your business. You're going to find out a way to make it work, and you're going to find out the good people. So with an independent VA, uh, the pros are it's often cheaper, and you have way more control over them because it's just them and you working things out together. 
but they're not pre-trained for cleaning businesses. There's no quality control and you don't know how to filter the banned candidates out yourself. So just be aware of that. With an agency, you'll pay more upfront. And if you're interested about that, you can talk to me, but the quality is typically much higher. They've been trained for your type of business. All our VAs are trained on ZenMade, for example, and they can jump straight into running the business for you. And if there is an issue, I find this a huge pro with an agency. If your VA disappears or something happens to them or there's an emergency, the agency will have another VA who can jump in and cover for you. With an independent VA, there's no one left. You're going to have to jump back in yourself and take care of things. So uh, it can be useful to start with an independent VA, but just realize when you scale uh, into $30,000, $50,000, $60,000 a month, an agency is going to be much better for you. So uh, this is about an independent VA, but I want to be realistic with you about what to expect. So one last thing is if you should go with international US. Uh, most people might just throw a, a list of pros and cons for each, but I'm very blunt and I have a very strong opinion about this. I've worked with many, many, many clean business owners over the years and many, many, many VAs as well over the years. And I'm gonna tell you right now, there's nothing wrong with international VAs, but if you own a cleaning business or a local business, you should hire a US-based VA. And that's, that's, that's just end of discussion right there. I'm gonna tell you why, but please, trust me on this just please trust me on this and hire a us-based va so the reasons why are your customers want someone that sounds local and this is really important so we actually trialed offering international vas for a while and we actually had to replace some of our vas the quality was great and they were amazing at their job they were flawless but yeah, this is just a weird psychological thing uh, people in their local area, they want someone who sounds local often. They want someone who understands their culture. And that can actually be a reason people don't book. I, I never would have thought that myself before. I would have thought that was stupid if someone told me that. Unfortunately, the data is there. People do prefer someone who sounds local and who understands their culture. So uh, even though you can get a very quality international VA, they may be costing you uh, in ways that you hadn't expected or you wouldn't know. So that's the reason number one. Reason number two is just uh, international is cheaper, but uh, if they're the first point of contact with the customers, you want there to be zero communication issues. So the first one and two are very closely related. But uh, the big issue for me besides that is really uh, software, phone systems, and internet connections are, often have a lot of problems with international VAs. Uh, specifically phone systems is a huge issue. Most phone systems that you might be using don't allow international phone numbers outside of your country. And so you can't actually hook your VA up to your phone system. Uh, and if you miss a couple calls because of call drops, you could be losing hundreds of dollars. So uh, software and phone systems is a big issue with international VAs that unfortunately, even in 2019, the industry has not really solved yet. Um, so that's number two. It's just easier if you have a US-based VA for that and it's more reliable. Uh, the last thing is it's just an awkward truth in the VA industry is that many international VAs disappear on you. Uh, because people hire international VAs because they're cheaper, uh, if you're paying them $3 an hour or $4 an hour, the second someone offers them $6 an hour, that's like doubling their pay. So they're, they're not gonna be loyal to you. They're gonna jump ship straight away. And this happens all the time. I know many VA agency owners and this has happened to many clients. So if you do go with an international VA, it's much more likely that eventually they'll disappear on you. And if you're on vacation somewhere, you might not know for two weeks that no one's taking care of your business. And that's terrifying. So just something to be aware of, but please go with a US-based VA. I, I wanna be very clear that that is the better option for a cleaning business. Other types of businesses, maybe international is better, but for a cleaning business, US is the best. So, I'm going to jump into it now. I know that was a little bit more time than I wanted to spend in the intro, but this is the bulk of what I wanted to share with you. <sighs> Sorry about the lighting, by the way, guys. I'm in sunny England where it's always cloudy and the lighting is terrible, so I apologize for the lighting issues. Um, one of these days, I hope to meet you in person, <laughs> so there's no lighting issues. I feel like every video I do for you guys, uh, it's really bad lighting. So I just see this, this pane of darkness over here in the corner. <laughs> um, so uh, the first thing you want to do is uh, really map out your job application and you want to be very specific here. So uh, you've probably already written job application for a cleaning technician or an admin assistant, but there's a few specific things I want you to pay attention to as you're actually creating the job application. And if you want the job application template that's in the course at the end, uh, I give you all my exact templates and SOPs for you to just plug and play. So 
I want you to create a draft of your VA job description and write down exactly what you're looking for help with. Don't just put general admin duties, be very specific and brief. So write the top three to five things that you know you want to delegate at first and put them in. So I recommend phones, scheduling, and handling teams. Those are the first three big duties that if you offload will give you hours of your day back. So be very specific with the exact things you want them to do during the day in the job description. Uh, with experience, this is a really important point. It's not just as simple as putting five or 10 years experience. I wanna tell you what we do. What we do is hire VAs who are relatively new to the VA industry, not completely new, but they've been working between two to five years in the industry usually. But they have years of experience working in an office or for another local business already. Many of our VAs actually used to run cleaning companies themselves or have worked for cleaning companies. So uh, that's why they under, they're able to jump into your business straight away because they've actually done the whole thing before. Um, so we hire people who are new to the VA industry, but who actually have prior office experience so they are familiar with phones and scheduling and how to do everything so it's not going to be a long adjustment period for them whereas if you go with a va who has 10 years experience they've often been out of the game for so long they're doing social media or email funnels they're it's often less relevant to the work that you need them to do so with experience i just want to be specific about what you should put because if you just put a number it's 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 not going to qualify people as good as it could so this is a, a little strange one we put in the job description, but uh, it does help, is put what you want your assistant to love and be exceptional at. Because every assistant can promise you everything under the moon. The, a problem with the VA industry is most VAs offer 30 or 40 different services. <laughs> they're not very specific. They're so general and they're just kind of, okay. they're like a C out of, at all of them. They're like a 5.0 at all of them. You want an assistant who loves scheduling. They just love it. It's something fun that they do. They like making timetables and to-do lists and, and they love scheduling. You want someone who loves that stuff or who really likes talking to people on the phone and, and chatting. Like you, you want to put what they're exceptional at because you want people to explain why they're great at that and, and why that's what they love doing instead of just generally they can do it. Um, with hours, you're gonna be a little bit specific here too. Don't just put nine to five or eight to six. The advantage of a VA is that you pay them only for the time that they're working. And with a cleaning company, you're not working solid hours, eight hour days. You're working five minutes here, 10 minutes there, 20 minutes there. It's broken up throughout the day. And you pay your VA for that too. So uh, with the hours, put the hours that you want them to be available, uh, but explain that they won't be working that whole time. Just need, they need to prioritize your work when it comes in. So just, just be specific with the hours and the days. Um, and be specific with roughly how many hours they're gonna be working each day too. Maybe two hours cumulatively or three hours. Uh, and if you're doing less than 30,000 a month, they're probably only going to be working, you know, two, two and a half hours a day. There's just, there's just not that much work between them and you to do. Um, they will have a couple hours, but they're not going to be working five hours a day. So put that down as well. Um, one last thing on that is just be aware that VAs often have packages that they sell you, not just an hourly rate. So some VAs will have 30 or 60 hour packages like we do that they'll sell you every month. Uh, but some will do an hourly rate. So just be aware there's kind of two different ways to do things in the VA industry. Uh, and that's why you want to be specific with the number of hours that they may work each day, because then you can work out a package together with them. So VA applications should just be concise, blunt, and just really specific. So um, where you post it, uh, this is a little bit specific as well. So uh, many of you have maybe seen me posting in Facebook groups for VAs. We have dozens of VAs who work for us. Sorry, my nose is going crazy right now. Um, my, uh, <laughs> so many have seen me post in Facebook groups for VAs because we have so many now. Um, I want to explain to you that it can be decent, but for you looking for an independent VA, Facebook groups is not a good choice. So we have a process in place. We've trained VAs before. We know what we want specifically. So Facebook groups is just another source that we post, but we actually post in many different places. And these are all the places that we post. So for you, I recommend against posting in Facebook groups at first. It's the easy, lazy way to do it, but you will not get the best candidates for your cleaning business. So uh, hold off on Facebook groups for now. Instead, I recommend that you go through your own network first because a lot of people who have worked in an office want to transition to being a VA, but they don't have their first client yet. And so you may find many people in your office actually have the perfect experience to do that for you, but you just don't know because you haven't asked. So ask first. 
in your own network. Uh, the second place is virtual assistant forums. If you uh, really feel like you need someone more experienced and you're happy to pay more, then I recommend that you go through a virtual assistant forum. The, these are a little bit older, but there's many of them and they're really active and really useful. So um, go to a virtual assistant forum. These are people who've been VAs a lot longer, who charge more, but their results are just incredible. And the quality that they bring to your business is incredible. So. Uh, if you really feel like you won't do a good job training them, they need to be independent from DA, day one, and they just need to know already how to do everything, then I'd recommend a virtual assistant form. If you have odd hours in your cleaning business, um, if you only need them part-time a couple hours on Friday or Thursday or Wednesday, um, or, or nine to one, not nine to five, it, just weird hours that you need them to work, uh, I recommend Upwork. Upwork is good for that because they often have their own clients through Upwork as well, and they can they can be available for you. And when when there's no work for them to do for you, they can do other clients' work. Uh, but when there is, they can prioritize yours. So I recommend Upwork if you need a part-time VA. Uh, and the last place that's surprisingly good to find VAs is Craigslist. I, I know uh, don't don't dismiss this just because I said the word Craigslist. Uh, I've actually found good cleaning teams through Craigslist too. I know it has a bad reputation, but Craigslist, the major cities specifically, are great for finding VAs. So New York, San Francisco, Chicago, uh, post your job post in Craigslist in the major cities under Help Wanted, and you'll get a lot of qualified candidates that you can speak to. It's worth doing. Uh, it does cost money, $25 to, to $45, depending on the city that you're posting in, but you get some great candidates and we've hired a few uh, VAs from Craigslist. So that's the basics of where to post, but there's a few specific hiring practices that I actually wanna go through with you too uh, when you're hiring a VA. And of course you may have your own process for hiring cleaners, but there's a few just for hiring VAs that I wanna to touch base on. 90% of your best hiring practices you can take from, from one position to another, but for VAs, here's a few. Uh, because VAs are often small business owners themselves, you want to discuss openly what your standard of excellence will be for each task. What do you expect? What's your response time for phone calls that you expect? How should they respond to emails? Full sentences, you know, really polite, like be specific on each task that you give them. Instead of just saying we expect great quality, be specific on each task and set out what you consider an excellent job on each task to be. And this is so helpful to refer to. It's boring to do, but, but once you've done it, it's really helpful to do. So set out your standard of excellence and actually discuss it with them on your call together. Um, this one's really important. If your VA is gonna be answering the phone and taking down customer details and in your Thumbtack and your Yelp account, they're gonna have passwords and credit card numbers. So you should have cybersecurity insurance first of all anyways. Um, I, you can usually add it on for like seven or 12 bucks a month to your insurance plan. You need to get that anyways, but use a last pass password manager. And what this is, it's a encrypted password manager where you can store your passwords for everything and credit card details for everything securely in there and then share it with your team where they can access the account without the information. This is really powerful because you can give them access to it and they can log in like normal, but you can revoke the access at any time. Here's the thing, you're, not gonna, you're probably not gonna find your perfect VA the first time. It's probably just not gonna happen, I'm sorry, but but you can revoke access in five seconds when you have to fire your first or your second VA. And you can take it away, they can't access the accounts again, and that's why you should use LastPass. It makes uh, securing your information and your customer's information really easy. So uh, that's the most important one on this page. And it's one that everyone looks over because they don't care. Everyone says they care about cybersecurity, but they don't care. So to make it easy for yourself, just use a password manager and give them access via the password manager instead of emailing them the information. If you do that one thing, you'll be ahead of the game. So with the contract, um, they may have a contract for you, which is fine. Many VAs are their own small business. So if you want to work with them, you need to sign their contract. Um, if that is the case, read through their contract, but be uh, specific about adding stuff to the contract. So you wanna add your own stuff to the contract as well, and then you can agree and sign it. Uh, and add everything in the job description into the contract. So if they specify general admin duties, you get specific and say phone calls and the standard of excellence that we agreed upon on the call. 
So get specific about everything in the contract and put that in the contract too, and then sign it. If they don't have a contract and you're the one sending them a contract, that's fine. But again, be very specific about what's in the contract. Uh, also, just be really upfront with what you pay. I see a lot of business owners not upfront and they ask for the perfect candidate with 10 years experience and blah, 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 the highest quality person ever to be a VA in the world. And they pay like $15 an hour, which is fine, but they don't be upfront about that. So they get a really amazing VA come in who charges $40 an hour and you just waste each other's time by not telling them to pay up front. So just be upfront with the pay. If it's lower and you feel guilty about it, that's okay, but that's more incentive for you to post. If if you if you can't pay a high rate, be more upfront with that because you'll only get the people who are willing to accept that rate then. Um, and just be really ridiculously specific and blunt throughout everything. Don't be rude, but, but be specific and blunt because you wanna be on very clear terms about everything. And if you're ever gonna be blunt at any point throughout this process, it's when you're talking to them about the job that they're gonna do. So last thing is uh, give them trial tasks to do when you're onboarding them. And so I have a whole, in the course, I have an entire onboarding sequence with interview questions and how to onboard them all laid out for you. Um, so we're gonna, we're gonna skip over that a little bit because I don't want this talk to be too long, but I actually have that all for you that you can have if you want it. Um, but give them little trial tasks as you're onboarding them. So um, send, what I like to do, and some others do this as well, is I like to find real complaints from my old Yelp page or Thumbtack and of one star reviews and I send it to the VA and I tell them to respond exactly how they would if they were replying as my VA, even though I haven't hired them yet. And then I study their responses, how professional it was. Did it actually address the customer's issue or did it just say, oh, sorry, in a nice way? So uh, give them little trial tasks that they'd actually be doing in your company, like a test call, pretend to be a customer and book with them, for example. Um, give them those little trial tasks first because you want to test them under a bit of pressure first. And, and the last thing is ask them what their end goal is as a VA. Now, I've mentioned this a few times, but many VAs are business owners themselves. We don't think about it that way, but they are their own business owner too. And because of that, many want to build their own VA agency and hire their own VAs and grow it like I have. Uh, but many want to just be stay at home and they want to work a couple hours a day for the long term or, they're, or they'll be happy working for you for 10 years. So ask their end goal as a VA because you want to make sure that your end goal and their end goal aligns. That's all. But there's three really important conversations that you do need to have when you first onboard them and you're going to first start working together. And this is one of those steps that through the whole talk, if you do just these steps, you will, again, you'll be very ahead of the game. So please have these three conversations with your VAs and you will have a lot more success with the VAs that you bring on. So um, I'm sorry, I put that in the brackets there for you. So the first important conversation you wanna have is what will I hand be handling and what will you be handling? And this is so important because uh, when I brought on my own VA at first, uh, I was, uh, <laughs> this is embarrassing to say, it was really stupid. Um, I, I brought them on and then two weeks later, I went to Tokyo to see my girlfriend. Uh, I live in Tokyo and London, but we're based in, in DC. I just haven't been back to DC in a couple of years. Um, but uh, I brought the VA on and then basically two weeks later, I jumped ship to the other end of the world. Um, and I wasn't very clear with their duties versus my duties. I basically threw a task at them and said, oh yeah, this is your duty now, by the way, I don't wanna do this anymore. Uh, I did it in a more polite way than that, but that's essentially at the core of what I was doing. Uh, and so they were confused on what, who, who their duty was and what my duty was. And so just be very specific about whose duties are whose because you want them to be able to take personal responsibility for that duty in that role and allow them to grow into that, to bring the quality of work to each role that they do. So be specific about the phones or the scheduling or the emails. You're gonna handle the marketing and sales. You're gonna handle the emails. They're gonna handle the phone calls. They're gonna handle the teams. Just be really specific about what you hate and what you want them to do. And it's just crucial to do that from day one. So actually write out a specific list of what you will do and what they will do. Not just what they will do, actually write out for yourself what you are gonna do during the day. So that's the first big conversation to have. And the second is just how do you communicate best? So communication styles is a whole nother talk that we could have, but uh, to keep it really basic, uh, just be consistent with how you communicate and choose how you're gonna communicate together because you are virtual, you're not sitting next to each other. So is it gonna be by phone, by text, by email, by Skype? Be specific about how you're actually gonna to communicate together. 
the way we do it at ThinkMades is, is uh, sorry, um, the way we do it at ThinkMades, I just want to jump back to the first point because there's something I need to add. So uh, I also batch my tasks at different times. So uh, my VAs will charge cards at 9 a.m. Uh, and they will also, uh, you know, do follow up calls at 9 a.m. And then they'll put calls at hold, you know, uh, cards on hold at 4 p.m. So we actually batch the tasks at different times throughout the day as well. Um, but with communication, what we do at ThinkMades is depending on the size of the task, we have a different mode of communication. So if it's just a really quick two to five minute task that needs to be done uh, that one of us hasn't got around to yet, we'll post it in the WhatsApp group that we have. And then whoever sees it first will take care of it. Um, if it's a bigger task, we have a to-do list that we use, uh, an internal one that I made, um, that you can use uh, for things like uh, wedding promotion, uh, sorry, uh, like a wedding, a house cleaning for, a, you know, a couple after their wedding that they're moving into a new house or a spring cleaning promotion. Any important tasks that you have, we put it on uh, the to-do list and then we have a specific order that we get them done in. So uh, for different levels of tasks and their importance, we have a different way of communicating. Uh, going up in level of importance. So establish a way that you're going to communicate and that you're actually going to get the tasks done together so that at the end of the day, you can know the tasks have been handled. Uh, and just have a weekly meeting as well. Just Even if it's five minutes, even if you have nothing to talk about, just jump on for five minutes for a weekly meeting and just discuss what you're going to do next week and what the focus is going to be for next week. But have a weekly meeting to discuss everything. Um, this is something I'm really bad at personally. I don't check into my cleaning company for, for you know, weeks at times. I, I really don't, uh, I'm really so uninvolved. I really don't work any time in my cleaning company anymore. It just runs itself. But because of that, I, I'm sometimes lazy about meeting with my manager. And so having a weekly meeting is really useful to stay involved in your company without, you know, without doing the work yourself and having your manager uh, know that they can go over important issues with you. So communication is just the second important conversation to have. Uh, and the last one is really just what we call the uh-oh protocol, which is how we handle tough situations. So if there's uh, an emergency situation, have a small SOP for that. Uh, if there's a team issue or a customer issue or a scheduling issue that's, that's really blown up, have an SOP for those things. So uh, if there's an emergency, like uh, someone dies, you know, or someone's in the hospital or, or something really bad happens, have an uh-oh protocol that your VA can initiate when that happens. You don't have to think of every situation, of course, but just have a few key responses that they can have or courses that they can take to fix things. So one of the ways I do this, I'm going to talk about it later, is through a fuck up fund. Um, and that's basically a, a way to give the VA independence to deal with issues that come up. But if there's a real emergency, of course, they should be able to call you. And this is really important for me in particular because I live in Tokyo and there's a 13 to 14 hour time difference between Tokyo and Washington, DC. Uh, so I don't want to get three calls during the night because of an issue. So my VA only knows to call me when certain situations arise, when it's a true emergency. So uh, just in advance, talk about what to do when emergencies happen. So when you're training your VA on the essentials, uh, this is what I consider to be the most important things that you really want to do first. There's, a, again, there's a lot more on the course in this, and it's very structured very well for you to go through it step by step but this is what you should be doing that are, that are really the core essential. So decide on this. So, you know, in the job description, when you put uh, what the VA is going to do, this is how you can really decide uh, what the VA is going to do first. And don't just put, don't just put the tasks that might make the most sense for them to do first, because humans are not really rational creatures and we don't stick to that very well. Instead, manipulate yourself psychologically a little bit and decide on the tasks that you hate the most. So what are the three tasks that you just hate doing in your business? For me, it's phone calls, handling team issues, and, and handling customer issues. I just, I hate it. I hate it. Uh, I'm not, I'm not a, a people pleasing type of person that wants to jump in and fix the problem for them. I just, I hate getting on the phone and I hate dealing with customer issues. I really like that is like the, that is like the absolute last thing I possibly want to do in my business. I'm actually fairly good at fixing them but I just hate doing it. Like I cannot impress you upon you enough how much I hate it, how much I hate phone calls. <laughs> so I haven't, I haven't done a single phone call for my cleaning business in two and a half years now. And I'm so happy. That thought makes me so happy. So for you, I want you, the feelings that I just expressed to you right now, I want you to have the same feeling. What do you hate in your business? What do you just not want to do? 
anymore, even if it's a small task, what do you just not want to do? And start there. Those three to five tasks that you really hate, those are the tasks that your VA are gonna take off your plate right now because the psychological stress, the emotional burnout that you're gonna that you have from doing them will be alleviated by having the VA do them for you. Even if it's only an hour a day of work or 30 minutes a day, them doing the tasks that you hate for you is such a huge relief that it's priceless. So have them do those tasks first. If you really can't decide, then just do phones, team, and customers first, and you handle the rest. But if you can, and if you know what you hate, have them handle those tasks first, and then over time you can delegate more tasks. So for the next week, work with them closely on the biggest tasks that you dislike and, and until they have a quality that you find acceptable for them to do. It doesn't have to be as good as you. Ideally, it's better. But if it's a little bit worse than you, that's okay too, because you're buying back your time to focus on scaling the business. So if they're 95% as good as you, that's acceptable. Don't worry about the other 5%. So for the next week, work with them closely on the biggest task that you assign them. And then the week after that, the second biggest, the week after that, the next biggest, until they're slowly very comfortable with each task and they're performing it well. Don't just throw everything on them at once. If you do, um, they're just gonna be overwhelmed. So you're overwhelmed in your business right now. And if you send all the tasks to them, they're gonna get overwhelmed just like you are. So you need to introduce them slowly to tasks. And if you do that, uh, they'll perform so much better. So just take it slow and easy. They're not in your head. You haven't written stuff down for them a lot often, and they just need time to acclimate to your business. They will, but it may take four to 12 weeks. 12 weeks is not a lot of time in this grand scheme of things for you to buy back your life and your business. That's not a lot of time. So the biggest mistake I, I see business owners making is, is just dumping everything on the VA in the first one to two weeks and then getting angry at the VA when they're not performing at the level they expect and then firing the VA. That's the biggest mistake I see and it happens all the time. And it's, it's a shame because if they just gave them a few more weeks, they would have a VA that would stick around for years and be happy about it. So uh, one important thing is if you are gonna have them handle your teams, introduce them very slowly to your teams because your teams have gotten used to speaking with you over the years and you wanna ensure that they have a good working relationship with your VA instead of just them feeling like they got a new boss and they can't talk to you anymore. So slowly introduce them to your new VA over time and, and get them used to talking to the VA for issues instead. So, so for the first 90 days, there's really a lot that, that they're gonna be doing. And over those 90 days, you wanna gradually give them more and more independence, not all at once. And the last thing is the fuck up fund I mentioned in the last slide. This is just really cool. Um, it's something that I got from Tim Ferriss, but it's been really useful for me. So because I live in another country uh, in a different time zone, I, I don't wanna to have to approve of my VA's every decision. I want them to be independent to make those decisions. And sometimes they're gonna make decisions that cost me money, but save me stress. And so I give them something called a fuck up fund where up to 300 or $500, uh, they can fix the issue. They can spend that money and not bother me. So if a, a customer wants a reclean, even though their place is really clean and it would cost our team 120 bucks to go back and clean it, I don't wanna spend that money but I don't wanna deal with the bad review from the customer and the negativity and the stress that they bring. So my VA knows to just send the team back and pay the team the extra money and don't even mention it to me. Don't even bother me about it. Maybe mention it on our weekly call just as a note. I really recommend you do this, even if it's 50 bucks or a hundred bucks a month to start with, give your VA a fuck up fund where they, are, they know they have your support to fix that issue and they don't have to worry about costing you money. It's such an empowering thing to let your VA know that they can do that. So uh, one of the things you have to decide is really which tasks you're actually going to delegate. Um, of course, I've talked about like what tasks you hate and, and what are the big tasks, but um, that's, that's really just deciding what the tasks are. How you, prior, how you delegate them is just as important. And I wanna go over that. So, what I do is something called the ABCD method. I do with this with all of my businesses, with all of my teams, all my VAs, everyone. And what you want, what, when you uh, know what tasks you want to delegate, you need to prioritize them by uh, level using a letter grade. So A is super important, B is important, C is kind of important, all the way down to E, which is unimportant, but we should still do it eventually. 
So, so assign each task a letter grade so that your VA knows on the to-do list or, or on their work that day exactly what order of priority they should give each task. So they're always getting the most important tasks done in your business for you. They're always doing revenue generating activities for you. So that's number one is assign every task that comes in for your business, whether it's a regular everyday task or a one-off task, a letter grade of importance for your VA. That's number one. Number two is to batch your tasks together for maximum focus and productivity. So what we do is we have a batch period from 9 a.m. to 10 a.m. where we take care of all the small tasks from 12 p.m. to 1 p.m. and from 4 p.m. to 5 p.m. Those three batch periods throughout the day is where we take care of all the little tasks like responding to a customer review, charging the cards or doing scheduling or doing follow-up calls. All those little regular tasks that we have to do, we batch them throughout the day so we get them all done at once so we can leave the rest of our day open for the important A tasks that come through or a new customer that wants to book or a really big new project that we have on. You want to batch all the small tasks together so you can just do them all at once and have your entire day free for the big stuff. Otherwise, the little things are going to control your day and you might only get one big task done, if any at all. So it's OK to throw random tasks their way, but just don't do it too much. Just do it during the batch periods if you can or let them do it during that time. So that's that's the the that's the main crux of it. There's a lot more on how to delegate, but that's the main crux is is what tasks you want to delegate, the priority of those tasks, and when they should be doing them. That's really it. Of course, you discuss the standard of excellence for each task in the beginning as well. But the last thing is just set expectations and be realistic with those expectations. Don't you know if they need to reply to a, a lead, um, say 15 minutes say respond to that text in 15 minutes don't say five minutes yes if you respond in five minutes you might have a slightly higher close rate than if you respond in 15. but it's unrealistic to expect your va to do three or four things at once and then do all those three things in five minutes of each other it's not realistic you're going to burn them out they're going to get really stressed and you're going to get angry at them for not doing the job so be realistic and set realistic standards of response times for every task that you give them and don't get angry at them if they occasionally fall outside of that field because remember it's not like they're sitting around doing nothing just staring at that task for 10 minutes and then doing it they're doing three or four things at once for you so you don't have to do three or four things at once so uh, another really really important point is creating a preference sheet that they can use and this is one of the most powerful things i've ever done for my vas is creating a preference and SOP sheet for them to use that they can refer to when you're not available. This allows them to immediately know how to handle things in your business and how you like them done, how you like the phone answered, how you like to close leads, how you like to upsell, how you like to schedule your teams. Give them an in-depth reference sheet that they can use on their own for each of these tasks so they don't have to ask you the same question 10 times, so they're they don't forget, so they're not they're nervous and they slip up. They can refer to the reference sheet anytime. I actually provide an entire done for you reference sheet and preferences sheet for cleaning companies in my course that you can just plug and play it, it details all our policies and references specifically for a VA how to do them for you it's a really in depth thing. And it's it just saves you hours and hours of your time that you can just plug and play with so uh, I will talk about it at the end, but it's just a plug and play thing. Um, how to talk to customers how to handle complaints that's all in there. And it's a great thing to do for you, I encourage you to make your own as well because it's a great thing to do when your VA is just starting. They'll, they'll learn it all off by heart eventually, um, but the first two to three months, that's really helpful for having that preferences sheet and actually make them use it. So uh, I would say probably one of the most important things in this whole talk is building trust with your VA. Because your VA is virtual and you're not sitting next to them, you both have to build trust with each other and you have to let your VA know that you trust them. You have to explicitly let them know that you trust them because they're going to be worrying about that. So just remember that they're learning to trust you as well. So when you throw them in the deep end, uh, you might be too trusting at first if you've never worked th them before. That's another reason that you want to slowly introduce them to tasks week by week and month by month is that you can uh, introduce them to the task, bring them up to the quality of, ta of level that you expect, and then know that you can trust them to do that task at that quality because you've seen them do that task a hundred times at that level. So you can trust them and they know they can trust that you'll accept that level as well. So don't, that's another reason to not throw them in the deep end 
is, is you're learning to trust each other. Uh, many people in this industry talk a good game, but there's actually no standard that of what makes a good VA. I talk about green light benchmarks in the course for how you know you're hiring good, a good person. But but here's a really important point. If you post on Facebook groups or Craigslist, there's no international standard there for what makes a good VA. There's VA certifications, but they're not really big. And there's so there's no standard for, for, for quality for what a VA is. So you have to be on the lookout for how to decide what's a good VA and what's not. You can't just listen to them telling you to do the task. That's why we have them do the trial tasks as well. So you can actually see that they can say what they say they can. So when you're building trust with your VA, I, I really recommend that you have a weekly meeting too. Uh, I, I recommend that you have a weekly meeting the, or even a bi-weekly meeting the whole time you have a VA. But if you absolutely don't want to, you could probably have a monthly meeting uh, after enough time. But but the first few months, even the first year, you should have a weekly meeting with the VA so that you can talk to each other and just get to know each other a little bit too, as people, not just as boss and VA. So get to know each other a little bit too. Because when working virtually, trust is 10 times more important than you're working next to each other, next to each other, because you can't just look over each other's shoulders. Sensitive information about you and your customers is passed along, and accountability is just huge, especially when you have an independent VA. So again, trust is just huge with your VA and you need to learn to trust each other, but you have to be explicit about that as well. So we're getting to the last couple of slides now, um, but I, I did want to touch on one thing, uh, which is problem areas of working with VAs. Uh, so time logging is actually, it's okay. We, we log our VAs time. So they put in their time for, for whatever tasks they do and we send a report at the end of the week. Uh, so time logging is okay but I don't recommend that you do screenshot software. Some people use screenshot softwares to occasionally look at their VA screen to make sure they're not procrastinating. And I would just, I beseech you to remember that this is a relationship built entirely on trust. And if you can't have that basic trust that they're doing what they say they are, then I recommend that you get an in-person manager instead of a VA. It's gonna be better for you because I don't think you'll be happy with the VA uh, if you keep trying to um, be too intrusive in how they do the job. You need to let them be independent. You need to let them do the job themselves and you need to trust that they will do the job. And if you can't, I really recommend an in-person manager. It's okay either way, it's just a different approach, but that's when I would recommend a, person, a, a personal manager instead. So uh, how, how do you know they did the tasks? How do you know they aren't charging you for extra time? These are all worries that you'll have along the way when you first get your VA. Um, just, like, you know, just like when a customer hires your cleaner, they may have heard you have a good reputation, but they don't know that they're, that your cleaners are not going to steal money from them. They won't, but they don't know that because they've heard from their neighbors that maybe one time 30 years ago, their cleaner stole $5 from them, right? So just like your customers have doubts about you going through their heads, you're going to have doubts about your own VA when you hire them going through your head. So, so listen to those doubts but don't necessarily act on them because you are building trust with each other. And this can be a huge problem area if you don't. So um, with VAs, consistency can be a problem if you're not on top of them. That's why I recommend the first few months you work very closely with them to get, to get consistency to be a default habit with them when they're working with you. Uh, otherwise, if they're too independent at first, um, they may be you know, very laissez-faire as they say, uh, working together with, with you. And they may take some more time to do things than they should. So be realistic with the time standards, but, but be on top of them the first few months too. So there's this balance you have to achieve between independence and micromanagement at first. And you'll, you'll, you're, you're gonna screw up that balance a few times the first time you do this like anything, but you'll quickly find that balance with each other. So um, just be aware that that can be a problem area if you aren't on top of it. And a last one is, uh, some people can be very polite with their boss, but very rude with customers. So um, just be sure that they're being as polite with you uh, and as polite as your customers as they are with you. So just something to pay attention to is how they talk to your customers and how they talk to your teams as well. So that's mostly it. Uh, I'm going to talk about the course for a couple minutes, but I did want to say before I do that, guys, I'm always available to help. I've been giving out all this information for free for years. Those of you that know me know I give 95% of everything valuable I ever do for you away for free. I give a lot of my templates away for free. I give a lot of my own growth strategies for free, delegation tips. All of the stuff is for free. This talk is for free. 
So I'm always available to help. I'm always answering emails and Facebook messages, guys. So if you are worried about that or if you want to talk about it, let me know. I'm re I really am available to help you. So just let me know how I can help because this is really the tip of the iceberg. This is just a 101 to hiring a VA. It's not an extensive thing because you just can't get that in an hour long talk. It's just not possible. So this is really the tip of the iceberg. Um, and I wanted to create a more in-depth solution for you inspired by this summit because it's such a minefield to, to navigate your first time. And I want you to make sure that you get the right person working for you. So I just want to briefly talk about the course for you. This is a course that I've designed for a little bit and I've never released it because uh, I, I didn't, I didn't, um, I was unsure of if I should release to this public or not because people were telling me that would be suicide. You run a VA agency and you're going to tell people how to hire a VA so they don't need you. And that worried me for a little bit. I was like, yeah, I guess I could, I guess I could see that making myself irrelevant. But I finally decided that there's so many of you who just need a VA, they need help in their business that it's, it's honestly wrong of me to not release the course. And so I designed this really brilliant, short, impactful step-by-step -step course for you on how to hire your own office manager. You don't need to go through an agency. I didn't go through an agency at first. I made my agency later. And it can be just as good. It can be just as life-changing. So this course, when it comes out, you're going to get 50% off the course. It's going to be a fairly expensive course because it's very in-depth, despite it being short. Um, and it's really guided. I guide you all along the way to getting the VA. But I'm giving you 50% off as a gift for attending the summit uh, and for attending this entire talk. I know it's been a little bit long and I've really enjoyed talking to you about this. So uh, when you get it, you're gonna get 50% off the sale price. Uh, you can sign up with that link. I know it's a little bit long, but there's gonna be a link in the summit talk as well on my speaker profile that you can go and immediately just uh, click on it and go and uh, pre-purchase it. It'll be released at the end of the summit and I recommend you pre-purchase it before because I'm only going to have this open during the summit. It's not going to be open afterwards uh, because this is just uh, probably a one-time course that I'm doing maybe once a year. So in the course, I'm going to be including uh, hiring and training. I'm going to everything you need to know how to hire. I'm going to include uh, job description templates, job application form templates, interview questions, onboarding templates and my entire system for putting those all together. So you can just go step by step, step one, step two, step three, step four, you have a VA, right? So how to hand over everything to them. Everything is included in this course that you need to know to hire a VA. Uh, I show you how to delegate things. I show you how to prioritize tasks with them, how to handle problems that arise, how to do your weekly meeting with them. And I include my full preferences sheet for working together for you to just copy straight away. This is something that you could just straight up copy and use and in 10 minutes change for your own company and know that you can hand it off to the VA and they can get started. So there's a bunch of templates and an entire step-by-step -step system for you to go through. Um, but there's also in-depth videos that like me, I will walk you through them as well. I'm not just gonna throw a bunch of posts for you like some course masters do and then expect you to work through it. I'm actually guiding you with each section of the course with a video to go through that as well. So uh, I also include some advanced systems for you to implement with your VA. I won't talk about them on the call because they're very special, but these are some advanced systems that if you already have a VA or you really want to take using a VA to the next level that you can use and which have allowed me to really delegate everything in my business to the point where I just don't, I'm not involved anymore, but it's still growing. So there's advanced system as well. Uh, and the last thing is, is just a uh, in meeting agenda and how to conduct those weekly meetings. So I take you all the way from uh, hiring a VA, onboarding them and beyond to actually working together and being happy with your VA. So uh, it's a truly in-depth course, but it's something that has been needed for a long time. And I'm very excited to have you uh, join me for it. So uh, if you've been considering a VA, this talk that I've just given you will get you there. But if you want more guidance, if you want more certainty and you want the templates, you don't have the time to come up with all this stuff yourself. If you want to be guided there, then I recommend the course will be right for you. So I've really enjoyed talking with you guys. Again, please, um, you can get the course by going to that link or you can just send me a message on Facebook. I'm just Chris Schwab on Facebook. Uh, or you can contact me through chris at anovalocal.com. That's chris at I-N-O-V-A and then the word local.com. That's my VA company and my personal email. 
you can reach me at. So you can reach me out at any ways if you want to get this course um, or if you want to just pick up the course now, you can. But again, this is only available for a few days. Once the summit is over, I'm probably going to close this and that's going to be it for a year. I really don't do course launches often because when people buy my course, I want to make sure that you're happy and that the quality that I promised you is there. So I like working with you guys on these things. So I, that's why I don't do course launches often because I'm not looking to make a million dollars from a course like everyone is these days with the ClickFunnels crowd. I'm looking to bring quality into your life and I'm looking to change your business part by part. So I've enjoyed talking to you guys. Thank you so much for sticking around. I know it was a little bit longer um, than I said, but I really appreciate you coming along guys. And I hope that I see you with a really happy VA a couple of weeks or months from now. And I'd love to hear from you if you do hire a VA how life-changing it has been for you and how you found it. So thank you so much. And I will look forward to looking at the other speakers' talks too.